computer. Okay, great. So um, it's waiting for a few more people to come in. Style my kid, how are you doing? Okay, uh, Dynasty, I see Taryn Register is here. Dynasty. So, <clears throat> okay, it's four o'clock. Perfect. So thank you all for being here um, uh, at one of our Fashionably In webinars. Uh, at Fashionably In, we're a trade show platform. We're based in London and we do trade events uh, focused in the fashion, fashion industry, fashion, textile, lifestyle. Recently, we branched out into a few more categories, you know, during lockdown. Uh, basically, we connect people. Uh, we, we, we used to organize a show in London twice a year. Um, I mean, we're crossing fingers now that, you know, hopefully in September, we'll be able to do start doing our show again, you know, but but till then, uh, you know, it's, it's more about the virtual and, and stuff like that. So uh, before I get into today's webinar, which is focused on the kids wear industry, I see a lot of interesting people here, but I, I see no one's no one's put their video on. You know, so I just thought that maybe if anybody would like to put their video, you know, I don't feel, I don't like being in the webinar with me just being on video, you know, <laughs> you know, so anybody else I know. Okay, great. I see one more. Thank you. Thank you for Akash Deep from Russia. Okay. And uh, okay. So anyone else want to put their video on uh, before we get into uh, discussions? Okay, great. So we have Alexandra, Dynasty, great, thank you. The shop, by, yeah, feels better now. <laughs> okay, so so today today we're just going to talk about the kids wear industri industry all over the world. Uh, we're just going to ask questions to different people, and and then we're just going to remember all our talks are about getting to know each other, connecting with people, and most importantly, making fruitful connections. Okay, so Bombino, I'm going to start with you since you were here earlier. How are you doing? I'm good. So why don't you tell everyone uh, where you're based and a little more about your 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 company? Oh, oh California market, we were waiting for you. <laughs> hey, good I'm, morning. I'm in Brixton. Good afternoon for you. <laughs> <laughs> for, okay, so we're going to get back to you in a second. Um, so Bambinos, just tell us more about your store. Uh, what have you faced during lockdown? And now when things start opening up, what are you what are you looking forward to? Um, my store is a, um, a traditional um, children's clothes shop. I stock uh, school uniforms, uh, baptism clothes, first early communion clothes, um, a little bit of fashion. Uh, we've been going for about 34 years now. Oh, wow. That's and uh, <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> we've had it really tough. I mean, lockdown has been very hard because... Although we have an online presence, it's not been developed to the stage where it's working effectively and um, producing the kind of income that's needed. Um, and developing the online store more and moving away from the physical store is very difficult. Um, we're told constantly that people want um, to shop online. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, for any other small business, what it's like, but for, for, for somebody like us, it's difficult because children are different shapes and sizes and the constant having to buy something and send it back to something so small. And it's, it's very difficult. Uh, people prefer to come in. They want to come in. They don't mind looking online. They're happy to do that, but they want to come in and physically try on something, buy it and leave. Um, so it's really been difficult. Um, so do, do you keep... Do you keep more brands in your, do you keep more kids wear brands or do, are you doing private label your own brand as well? No, I'm not doing my own labels. Just, just um, run of the mill stuff, really. We used to do more brands. Um, like we used to import from Switzerland, from the US and places like this. But then, you know, it was really expensive. You know, people are no longer going to spend like 60 pounds buying a t-shirt for a kid. You know, <laughs> they'd rather pay the rent with that money, you know. Um, they want practical, functional, uh, hard-wearing and sensible, nice 
well, it's for kids. And if you, you know, somebody like me, I'm up against um, the likes of H&M and Primark and everybody else like this. It's, it's hard. It's very hard. Absolutely. But uh, we're, 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 you know, we've plowed on and we're, we're looking forward to opening the doors. Uh, we've got a backup of uh, like 18 month stock. Um, that we're going to have to shift um, and in the midst of all of that our landlords have increased the rent and demanded all the arrears for the last year we've been closed. <laughs> you're, you're saying they've, they've increased the rent you've increased yes. the rent now yes oh, oh dear that's that's <laughs> but, oh. but and, and is, is, have you been in the same location for the last 35 years or you've obviously moved or I've been in this location for 32 years 33 years yeah Wow! Wow! So, so, so you obviously you obviously know the kids wear business inside out. You obviously know everything. I try. I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. We know. We know as much as we know our, our catchment area. We know uh, the market that you know that 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 we don't, we don't sort of pigeonhole ourselves to any particular um, demographic. We're open to all and sundry, and um, and we do get you know. Um, sought after people will, will find us a lot of it more word of mouth than anything else um because we've been here so long um but yeah it's been it, it, it is going to be you know tough has been tough and we don't know what we're going to face when we reopen so what do you feel like what are like the best selling styles uh what do you feel are like the classics with kids wear or, or is it always changing um <laughs> You get sometimes the younger people who do want uh, something more up to date or in relation to traditional things. Um, but on a whole, um, for something like a baptism or First Holy Communion, you know, they want something that's going to, to, to celebrate the occasion and be appropriate for, for what they're doing. Um, Yes, it's nice to have um, new styles and whatever, but, you know, the, the whole emphasis is on the ceremony. And so what they want and what they're looking for is traditional baptism clothes or Holy Communion dress that is, you know, nice. They might want sparkly on it or something different, but on a whole, they want something traditional. Okay, perfect. And I'm, I'm <clears throat> thank you so much for your words, you know, your, your kind words and, and all your information. Now we're just gonna, we're just gonna, I just thought that before we get into our main speakers uh, for today, just thought that uh, also we could have everyone like introduce themselves because I see people here from all parts of the world, you know, and I think that's interesting that people could just talk about uh, themselves, uh, their businesses, you know, so just going to start with Matthew. Uh, how are you doing? Hello, everyone. Matilda. Oh, no, no. Matilda, I'm going to get to Matthew for a second and then get to you. Okay. So, yeah. Hi. Hi. We're doing good out here. Um, you know, I, I wish I could say we have a, a horrible winter going on in LA, but we don't. Uh, it's our it's our bright side over here, so we have good weather going on right now. Um, but, but yes, hello, everyone from around the world here. Um, I'm Matthew out at the California Market Center here in Los Angeles, California in the uh, United States. Um, I, uh, I'm here representing um, a couple different things, both the building, which is a, uh, the, the largest and biggest West Coast um, fashion showroom building here in the States. Um, also, we represent um, LA Kids Market, which is a uh, wholesale trade show that we run five times a year. And it runs alongside um, LA Market Week in general, which is uh, where menswear, womenswear, lifestyle products are sold um, to the retail buyers across the states and the world. It is open up is an international show. Anybody wants to come, come on down. Um, and then I can speak more to about what we do here, but I'll, I'll let us go around the table here. So just before we, uh, before, thank you so much, Matthew, for your introduction and, and, and great to see you here. So I, I've got a lot of questions that I want to ask you, but I'm going to just get to the audience first and our other speaker once upon a time. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you guys today? Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us more about, about yourself and, and where you're based and a little more about your, your business. I'm based in Phoenix, Arizona, and I have owned a retail children's resale store for five years. It's been quite an experience and lesson in humility. <laughs> and uh, it's it's a thriving business. And, you know, as economies go up and down, resale is a hot topic. And I own a franchise with Once Upon a Child, which is one of the larger 
I think it is actually the largest resale chain in the United States for secondhand clothing for children. So that's that's the next question I want to ask you because I noticed that you were a franchise. So as a franchisee, you obviously you obviously happy with the with the franchise because I see that you're doing really well, right? Yes, uh, yeah, it's very good. Uh, you know, the, especially for people who have not had experience in retail, it's always nice to have that um, safety net underneath with a little bit of a recipe for success. And you know, they do a very good job with that, and it's a proven. It's a proven company, 20 years old, so it's not like I jumped on the bandwagon when it was brand new. But even today, it's an it's an excellent it's been excellent for us. And I mean, it's not, not that it hasn't been a difficult journey. Learning retail in general is a difficult journey, but uh, it, it's a great line, and it's been a really steady um, market demand for us here. So yes, it's been great. When I took over the store, I bought the store from somebody. It was three hundred and twenty-five thousand. That's all it was doing. I didn't know what that meant, by the way, when I started. And uh, we got it up to eight hundred, or on track for eight hundred ninety-seven thousand this year. Wow. So yeah, you know, thank you. And a lot of that was just, you know, you pay for your education one way or the other. It's, you know, it took me a while to figure out what the heck I was doing. But we, we, I think we finally got it dialed in, and we're on a really good track. So, you know, I, I noticed when I went on your website, I saw that people could also sell and they could buy. So you, you offer you offer like a small kind of local marketplace. Is that some is that right? Can you tell us more sure. about how, how that works? Sure. As, as with most franchises, they're they're they've got a, a specific small market. But what it does as a whole is we buy clothes from our public, which the moms and dads bring the gently used clothes in. We pay cash for those, which is exciting to the customer. And it keeps money in our marketplace, which is kind of a cool idea. And then they have money to spend with us. And of course, we employ and donate a significant amount of clothes and toys and shoes to our local charities as well. And I think that happens throughout the United States. I think there's over 450 franchises operating in the U.S. in this particular Once Upon a Child. Okay, great, good. Thank you so much. I'm just going to get to some of our other audience members over here before then, before we get back to some serious discussion on the kids' wear. So shop by, uh, is that, did I say that, the shop by PR and Co? Yes. yes. Hi, how, Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Paula. Good, how are you? <laughs> so where, tell us, where are you based and, and, and a little more about your company? Yeah, uh, I'm based in Chicago. Okay, here in wow. the States. Um, and so PR, uh, Hindi for love. Um, and uh, so actually, I design and manufacture uh, as well. So I started as a home accents brand 10 years ago. Uh, and then uh, two years after the launch of the home accents, then started my children's line. Uh, so here in Chicago, though, I also have, so I was a wholesaler purely for um, seven years. And for the last three years, then I opened up our flagship store here in Chicago and oh, wow. um, now carry a range of other lines as well, um, both from the U.S. and, and worldwide. And, um, and then we're actually, we're building our, what I call is our forever flagship, forever um, home. So in the middle of all of this, we are building um, a, a large uh, force, well, it's a four-story building, but our retail will be um, about 2,800 square feet plus below grade is, an in, is our entire warehouse space wow. that I'm doing. So allowing our retail to be fully experiential, um, agree with the comments I've heard regarding the online. And so, um, you know, it was interesting of, uh, this has been a process for two years that I've been um, looking to do this construction and um, I kept dragging my feet on the design of the space. And then the pandemic hit and here in Chicago, we've, we're still in the middle of it. And, um, and interesting enough, I, it came to me of how I wanted the space to be designed, which I'm, I'm doing all of our walls are on movable tracks and um, wow. being able to con build and expand and contract space as needed. And then uh, converted the, what was going to be the garage, um, converted that into our entire experience an entire home space. So setting the 700 square foot garage into a, a cool experiential space. So, so um, sorry to yeah. cut you off. 
So you you keep just your line, but you mentioned you keep other lines from uh, other. I do I buy, exactly. I buy um, and I do one of a kinds as well. So um, I do everything from from vintage all the way through other brands, um, uh, carrying both children's and women's apparel, uh, as well as accessories for the home. And then um, once our, our flagship is set to open this fall, and so I then will include um, some small accessory furniture, but nothing of big case goods, but uh, yeah. So if, every, uh, if anyone, anyone over here, uh wants to reach out to you or, or showcase their, you know, showcase their collection yeah. to you. What is the best way? Would, would you, would you like it on email? What's the best way they should contact you? Sure. Email is great as well as, you know, DM through Instagram always works as well, you know, and then the connections can happen there. But yeah, and we actually, um, a large portion of my manufacturing, you know, in addition to my own brand, is actually it's my husband is Indian, which is where why I named it PR. So um, for that love and his family manufactures all my products. So throughout my near 10 year journey of this now, um, I do a significant amount of my manufacturing business is doing private label for other companies, both um, large and um, small independent companies. So you, again, creating that product that they know their customer and it helps them separate from from others you know uh, so yeah that's kind of my angle is I always say I'm the donut hole right like there's always a hole in the market and finding that hole and filling it is is key so I call myself the donut hole <laughs> lovely lovely mm -hmm. yeah so so like like I mentioned before um uh, our fashion being webinars are, are all about connecting. So if anyone wants to say anything, ask a question, uh, everyone leave your information on the chat box so everyone can, you know, network, you know, and like I mentioned, uh, it's, it's very informal and casual. We want to, we want to all gain from this. The idea is, is, I mean, that's what fashion Bean does is we connect people for business opportunities, you know, and moreover, uh, from our past webinars, like Akash, uh, Akash Deep could let you know who's here as well, who is one of our speakers in one of our previous uh, webinars that people do connect and things do happen. So like I mentioned, please reach out and connect. Don't be shy. Just getting to um, Alexandra. How are you? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, hear you loud and clear. Yeah, yeah so um, I'm the owner of Raspberry Plum. It's a high-end uh, children's web brand. It's kind of the opposite of uh, what the first lady was talking about. So it's fancy and it's stuff that you don't necessarily need. So um, <laughs> we are, <laughs> we're based in London and uh, we sell worldwide wholesale and retail through the website. So when you, when you say luxury, what price point are you looking at? So our dresses go from, uh, probably our cheapest dresses are about a hundred pounds to about 250 pounds. Oh, okay. So for a dress, yeah. And, and are you currently retailing in, in just the UK or you look, are you retailing in other parts of the world? No, um, we, we retail in other parts of the world. Our main market is the Middle East and the Far East. The Middle East is probably our biggest market. Um, we, uh, if we were to, to depend on Europe, we would go bankrupt, but um, we do sell in, in countries where they like to dress up and uh, it's not necessarily occasion clothes, it's, it's a designer brand. So it's, uh, it's kind of, yeah, design-based brand basically. Okay, so just to make some connections here now, now Matthew, you, you, you've heard, about Alexandra from from the UK. How do you work with brands and companies from other parts of the world, and what's the process of them getting into CMC? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, what's great about what we have with the LA Kids Market here in our building is it's actually the largest uh, grouping of kids brands on the west coast of the US. Um, and it ranges all categories. It's everything from mass market, going out to your discount retailers in high, high, high volume, um, all the way up to this level uh, here with Raspberry Plum. 
Um, you know, we have uh, several permanent showrooms on one of our main floors, which is our fifth floor. Um, and, it, and it's all kids showrooms. There's nothing but kids showrooms on that floor. It runs everything from glitter handbags all the way up to Stella McCartney kids. You know, so it, it's 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 everything in between for the kids market. There's toys. Um, it's mostly apparel, though. Um, so for a brand to participate out here, it, it's it's easy. There's a lot of options. Um, option one is to go all in, all in from the get go, and that would be to um, actually rent a permanent showroom within our leasing department. Um, we are actively leasing. We recently uh, renovated our fashion building out here. It was decades overdue. Um, so we have a brand new facility out here, renovated from top to bottom. Um, all fashion showrooms. Uh, you would have access to it year round. Um, it is your space to use and operate out of, uh, to do your sales, have your appointments. Um, you also get to partake in our five LA Kids Market a year that we self-produce within the building. Um, so just by being a tenant in the building, you open your doors, you're there, you're in the show just by by showing up that day. Do, um, do, if do you're not, the, yeah. Do, do a lot of the buyers and agents walk, walk, walk the showrooms? Is that something yes. that, that you see a lot happening in your place? Yes. So similar, I mean, I'm sure we've all heard of like magic or, or these huge trade shows um, that happen around the world. Um, think of that, but uh, in a physical building. Um, so instead of a booth style show walking around in a tent or in a convention hall, it's, it's, it's an office suite building. It's essentially a racetrack around the floor full of um, permanent showrooms. They're big glass front of facades. You put your displays out. You have your doors there. Um, and yeah, and buyers during these market times, they fly into town, they drive into town, or if they're local, LA has tons of kids boutiques out here that shop heavy. Um, and they come in and they want to shop and meet with you. They set up appointments, they write their orders. Um, also with the permanent showroom, if, if your buyer, let's say she does not want to come during market week, um, you can meet with her the following week. You can meet with her in the middle of July. That's the perk of having a permanent showroom out here. But for brands, for brands that are overseas, that would they have to invest in sales staff, or is that something that you also organize? Yes. So, so you would have to provide your whole sales staff and in your operations. Uh, the way that the permanent showroom works is essentially you're you're renting um, space. Um, so it's it's essentially like renting renting an apartment. Um, so you would still um, be operating your business just within that space. We provide the space for you. Um, the whole building is secure. You know, you get the security. There is parking on site. You have like, it's essentially buying a, an office suite that you operate your business out of that happens to be around all the same type of businesses. So, so it's, it's a center for, for business to happen in your marketplace. Um, another option, because um, many brands are just not ready for a permanent showroom or it's just a huge investment or you're overseas. So it's just tricky to run an operation in a whole other country. Um, we have temporary show spaces as well. So uh, they kind of change and flow throughout the year, depending on which market it is. Uh, but you could do um, a booth within one of our trade shows within the market uh, weeks. So we have a show called Label Array that we'll be bringing back online later this year. Um, and it's, it's, that show has footwear, women's wear, kids wear, accessories, handbags. It's got everything all in one floor that also happens during market week. So, um, that's another option. We're also offering, um, would you like to test out a showroom? So, so we're doing, um, temporary showrooms. So you would have uh, time to operate your business during an LA kids market, um, in an actual permanent showroom that you would just uh, temporary rent for three days during the marketplace. So it's a great way to test the market, see how it feels, see how your product hangs on the floor. Um, and if you get any traction with West Coast buyers, um, we do those as a one-time offer. Um, so you get a temporary showroom one time, you pay the fee. Um, after that, you'd either have to move to a permanent lease um, within the building or, um, or you can start doing our other temporary shows. Um, so that's, a, that's another option there. So great, great, great. Thank you for, for, for all the information. I'm just going to move from the West Coast all the way to the East Coast to Sophia Davis. Uh, Sophia, are you there? I'm here. How are you? Good. Hello, good to see everyone. Oh, okay. so, Sophia's in New York and works works with all the designers. She's, she's in touch with all the boutiques and she's a big, big supporter of all our webinars. And I'm so happy that you're always there. So you've been listening, what feedback do you have and what, 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 can, what, what words of wisdom can you give us? 
Well, first of all, uh, congratulations to everyone that's still thriving in the pandemic and thinking of different ways to continue with your brand. Um, I'm in New York City and I'm like a connector. So if you, you have a brand that you're trying to say, get into the US market, um, you know, I go around to different places and, you know, show your brand or your, your website or share it and stuff like that. Also on press and media, I publish uh, 12 publications with close to a million, um, you know, people. Uh, our, you know, we have our Instagram, our websites, we do fashion blogs. So we're able to highlight uh, different brands for different reasons. Like, you know, you have something that you need someone in New York or the United States to see because we have connections in LA and I see California market guy. I definitely want to connect with him. Uh, you know, we have a, basically any place you can name in the US, we probably know someone in that particular market. Um, if it's media you need, we have extended press lists of top fashion brands around, fashion press around the world, not just US, but, but around the but, world. So but, are things coming back? Do you think, are people going back to stores things in New York? are coming back fast. And I'm excited because we're going to be pub, uh, producing a, um, you know, a free outdoor show because, you know, things have been locked down so long. So we're going to be producing a free outdoor show and uh, all the public is going to be invited. So there are brands that, you know, uh, are out there and want to get that publicity, uh, you know, it's it's going to be an absolutely free show. I mean, so, normally so, our our shows when we just just on the list to get in, uh, they usually go about fifty thousand people. That's how many people register just for one show. Of course, the venue we have does not allow fifty thousand people, but those are fifty thousand new email names that we have that we can contact, and all of our lists are cleaned and everything to make sure we don't have duplicates or that people don't want to be, you know, contacted, they're not contacted. So there's no spam or anything like that. These are people that are interested uh, in fashion. So, so would, and, and what do you, what, what would you say about the kids where, would you, do you think it's, do you think it's evolving? What is, what is your take on, on, on just a few words that you would say about the market, the trends, the forecasting, what would you say? Well, I have two companies that I work with that do kids, kids wear. And I think the kids wear is coming back. I think it's a great market. It's coming back. People, you know, they're going to spend money on their children, no matter what. They may not have a new outfit, but their kids are going to have a new outfit. And then you're talking about maybe going back to school in September. The schools are opening. All of New York City, uh, you know, companies have opened, meaning uh, we have 80,000 workers in New York City, and they're all going back to work. So that means their kids are going to be going somewhere, either daycare, whatever, they have to look good. So I think it's, you know, the market is definitely opening up for kids. Okay, so thank you again, Sophia. I'm just going to get to a few other people before we, we start some discussion. So I see Montem. Thank you. Thank you. Montem, Milan, how are you? Oh, good. How are you? Okay, great. Tell us more. Where are you based? And tell us more about your, about your business. Oh, we're based right here in Chicago. Okay. And the name of the company is Montana Milan, named after my two daughters. And we do uh, little girls' dresses and raincoats, starting from age 18 months up to age 10. So we do like a duels. Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to, I was just saying, what price points? Any price points? Uh, yes, we retail for up to 170 okay. for some of our raincoats and dresses. And we do... Um, Denim. We also do like a starting to use denim in our collection, a 12 ounce denim and a nine ounce denim with a 2% stretch that we've been doing pretty well with. And we've also do a, uh, an organic collection, which is a very casual um, sweatshirts with hoods and uh, covered buttons and with skirts and scarves and which we do pretty well, which is the yarn comes from India and it's weaved in um, South Carolina. So, uh, are you are you manufacturing more in America, or you do are you outsourcing overseas? Uh, we manufacture right here in Chicago. 
Okay, okay, good. That way it's I can watch control of the manufacturing. We do all our, um, all our own patterns here because I was a technical designer and a designer in New York City for about huh? 15 years before I started my own collection. So I'm just, try just trying to make some connections here. So the shop by PR, if, how would you work with Monta Milan? Just trying to understand like, how would you, what was the best way that both of you all could start working with each other? Ooh, probably it went like for the shop, it would be um, carry, like looking to see if we could connect regarding carrying the line, right? Um, I think it's really interesting that that's what this so industry about this industry is you can even be in, in the same city and not be familiar with one another. Um, you know, and I, it sounds as if you, you have a great connection in India with your with your fabrics, but that mm -hmm. is also something that that we do but I you know I think it's probably learning whether behind, whether the the back end of things or the or the front end of of the business you know there could potentially be yeah connection there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah where in Chicago are you uh we're right off Chicago Avenue and Halstead <laughs> we're we're Halstead <laughs> we're Lincoln oh, you're Park, Halstead yeah oh we're wow yeah, we're Halstead and Webster. Oh, oh wow. We're yes. in a, a, a warehouse right off of uh, Chicago Avenue. Okay, awesome. Right yeah. behind the concrete prairie yard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right behind there. <laughs> so just to give you guys perspective, we are less than a mile away from each other. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to get together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I, I, to, I told you our webinars do work, you know. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, well done, just, in. Well done okay. guys. Okay, so now just to get another side of things, I'm going to get a very uh, a manufacturer, Mr. Mayville. May, I, sorry, sir, I always I always say your name wrong. Ma, 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 you got to unmute. Yeah, yes, it's my name is Mayil. Mayil, Mayil, okay. So Mayil, Mayil, Mayil is the name. My is the name of a bird, actually. Okay. So Mile is a is a manufacturer. He he's he's from India and he's he has his own. I've 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 seen videos of his factory. He's, he's walked me around it. And he's got a state-of-the-art uh, unit which specializes in, in, in all kinds of manufacturing. But he does obviously he does a kids' wear line and he does women's wear. And he obviously his fo his focus has been boxer shorts and other things as well. So Marvel, can you tell us more about your kids' wear, your production, a little more about your company? And if there's any Anyone who's interested in, in, in locating a manufacturer, you have someone who's right here and, and someone good and someone who's reliable. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, greetings to all. This is a uh, uh, Mail Wagonen from uh, India. Sorry, uh, India, Bangalore. Okay, we are um, a manufacturing facility near Bangalore. We produce for Europe as well as USA. Predominantly, we manufacture sleepwear for women's and men's. And we make kids' garments for Europe market. So we have uh, some agent in Spain as well as uh, in France and in UK, they buy our garments for kids. So we have about 300 employees are working in our company. We have a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility and uh, we do a lot of items for uh, sleepwear currently. So after the pandemic, the situation is now improving. So I'm looking forward to see, is there any opportunity for me uh, to uh, cater the requirement for US as well as whomever in the panelists. Thank you, thank you. So if anybody- One more really important thing i like to add is, I manufacture 95% uh, of my goods are 100% cotton or 98% cotton, 2% elastic, so that it will give a flexibility for the customers. So, you know, my, my, my question to you, uh, sir, is a lot of people uh, in the kids wear industry specifically, they always say organic, organic, my stuff is organic, you know, organic. See, I, I'm, I, I've been in the garment business pretty much all my life. Like, I, I mean, I'm, born, I'm pretty much born in a factory. My mom was, my mom was in garments. Uh, my whole family, my everyone, everyone's been. We used to have an office on 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 1407 in New York, uh, 34th Street. You know, so we've been in we've been in the business pretty much uh, my whole life. You know, and even before I was born, I was probably like you know <laughs> seeing what's going on. But basically, um, 
the question is that I want to ask you is, is organic? Everyone says, everybody says my stuff is organic, but how do you really know, is it organic? Because, uh, uh, and I mean, what are the certifications? Because I know that people just put certifications and they just say things that are not 100% true because today organic sells, the word organic, obviously makes it so what is your take and how do you certify your goods are organic sir see the very important question you have asked uh, tarun a lot of people say my stuff is organic but how do you believe see there is a question of certainty here we need to play a very important role as a manufacturer i don't manufacture fabric i manufacture garment okay i cannot i don't have the capacity to have a vertically integrated uh, system so that I can be able to prove to my customer that my fabrics is an organic fabric or my garment is an organic garment. So what I do here is I purchase fabric from the very, very reliable sources in India. There are certain companies like big companies like Arvind, Vardaman, KG Denim, where these people play a vital role in giving the organic fabrics. Basically, these people will go ensure from the uh, crop situation, from the crop I mean, from the plant, how it is converted into uh, cotton, then it goes to the spinning mill and it is becoming a fabric. They're having the periodic SOPs in order to ensure that this particular fabric is an organic fabric. And we will get a certification from them. It is question of going to the right source to get the right product and the value added fabric from the right source of the mill. Since I'm a manufacturer, I always go to reputed mills since I know I'm in this field for the last 24 years. So I know this particular mill will produce the correct fabric, whatever they say, we can be able to believe based on their SOPs and based on their past performance. And is this GOT certified or what certification is this? See, is it, is the it GOT mill, basically, there are GOT certified as well as, uh, there are a lot of certifications are there. Most of the people are GOT certified where if a particular uh, client asked me to purchase an organic fabric, what it <clears throat> I will do is I will go to the mill, get their certification, ensure that I purchase that particular fabric for this particular customer. Absolutely. Thank I you. think, uh, Taran, yes, I would like to add something yeah, to I what was, you're I, saying. I was just coming yeah. to you. You read my mind. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm all in all a fabric guy. You know, I've been married to this business in the last 25 years. And uh, what uh, this gentleman just said is absolutely correct. That uh, the first thing to do when you are looking for organic fabric is go to a certified mill. And you should definitely ask for the labels, you know, whenever you buy organic fabric. Uh, the mill is obliged to give you a certain number of uh, labels like, you know, DuPont does for Lycra or Bayer does for Elastan, you know. So, uh, you know, when they do that, you actually bind them into the contract that, you know, if something happens tomorrow, if you find out that the certification was not correct, you know, they'll be in actually serious trouble. So uh, one way of filtering it out is go to the go to a good mill like Arvin. Now, for example, he's talking about Arvin now. Arvin Mills from India, which is one of the largest denim producers in the world, they have their own farms. They have invested into farming specifically for uh, organic things, you know, and, and they're, they're, they're a fantastic company. And there are so many companies like that in India which are manufacturing really ethically and they are doing right stuff. So one, go for the right uh, mill, make sure they have all the certifications and make sure that they give you the right labels and right information. So that, you know, when you sell your garment, you will have a value added uh, uh, label to it. And you know that you know, you're selling an organic garment and you should get the right price for what you're doing. That's my so time. I'd like, like to add, for example, this garment, I'm sure that everybody can able to see this. This I have uh, shipped to Italy. This same count construction, this is non-organic fabric. And uh, the same count construction, but different color. For certain department stores, I have sent an organic fabric. This based on the trust and based on our uh, commitment, our uh, um, integrity, we go to the mill and we purchase the right fabric for the right customers. This is how, how we will play this entire thing, uh, Tarun. Okay. Thank and you. we will, from our, from our side, we will 100%. We will ensure that the customer, because 
when there is an organic there is a slight amount of increase in the cost we will always ensure that the customer is taken what is paid for okay okay i'm just going to get to uh, lanis frankfurt how are you doing you have to unmute okay and now yes yes, yes. Oh, perfect 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 <laughs> hi perfect. guys thank you so hey. much for giving hey. us this opportunity so my name is Anissa and I'm from Frankfurt. I'm the founder of Lanisa Frankfurt. Uh, we are a um, luxury fashion brand, um, handmade, um, and uh, we have a showroom in Frankfurt and also we are online and we produce uh, dresses for special event for little girls and also for uh, little children that um, are uh, old handmade with beautiful embellishments and with the best fabric that we buy from Italy Greece, and stuff like this. Yes. So are you selling your collection all over in store? Yes. Yes. Um, even the corona has this effect. <laughs> Yeah. Hi. I think I think I lost you. Uh, so, are you selling your collection in 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 Europe and America and other parts of the world, or is it only no in America? Not we are selling like in Middle East, Kuwait, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and also uh, in Europe as well, and in Russia. Okay, so oh, in Russia, right? So yes, Akash we... lives in in Russia as well. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So just, okay. just, just, just coming back to the costing, just to understand, um, just this is just so some of our viewers could understand also about the pricing structure and everything. When you just in kids wear, do you also follow like a 2.8? Do the stores follow like a 2.8 or 2.6 markup? Or what's the standard markup uh, in the kids wear? Anyone else could share this, this as well? From wholesale to selling price. Do you want to say something or give us your thoughts? I'm not hearing you well, sorry. No, I, I meant to say like the, the the wholesale to the selling price. What is the markup that the stores usually keep in, 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 in the kids' wear? Is it like 2.8? Is it 2.6? Is it 3? 2.6. Okay, is that? And do you feel that's the same? Uh, uh, I'm going to ask Bambino, uh, Bambino's children. Do you, find, do, you, do you think that's the same as well? Uh, shop by PR, would you like to give your thoughts also on, on pricing from wholesale to retail? Sure. Um, for a host, for the markup, I find on uh, apparel is 2.6, but on accessories for children, it's unfortunately it's closer to 2.25. I, I would have thought that accessories would, have, would be more, more margin. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, we've played with this for years, such as like for bedding, right? For children and quilts and things of that nature. Um, usually it's around 2.25. When we work with key accounts, they started at three with being able to give the discount um, break happens within, within 30 days. So it's hard to hold that three went in the straightforward in the retail, you know? So the key account's able to go three straight away. And then and then based on the scheduled break, the first break starts at 30 days. So I found as the retailer, having the apparel has been wonderful, <laughs> to be honest. The, the, the markup is, is helpful. And then as someone mentioned earlier, I think it was Sophia mentioned earlier, you would, the use of apparel for children, you know, it still is prominent in all of our minds of wanting to buy that outfit or that piece for our children or as a gift too, so. So I just wanna get a, another retailer's uh, point of view on this. Uh, Bombinos, are you still here with us? Yes, sorry, I'm sort of doing two things at once and trying to listen in, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Where are we? So just want just want your feedback on pricing uh, from wholesale to retail. What are your thoughts? Um, on markup, 
for us. We're looking at about, um, I don't know, what, what, what. Um... So like, if you keep a brand in your store, what would the margin that you would, what is the expected? It markup? depends on the brand, whether it's, whether it's, um, you know, a localized something, uh, company or whether it's uh, a, a small cottage industry or, or, or a, a more, you know, well-known brand. Um, I wish I don't do any more because um, I just couldn't keep up with that. Um, but at the minute for us, I mean, the, the sort of stuff that we do with school wear, um, it's, it's not very much. Um, the markup on school wear is about, you know, 25 cent um, for us markup. Um, we did uh, have, you know, other, other companies that did like uh, silk, um, Christine robes and things like this, and, and the markup on that is a lot more, but they are really expensive stuff. They start from about, a, you know, 160 pounds, 180 pounds for a robe. So you're looking at, you know, almost 70, up to about 70% on something like that. Um, and it, it really is um, very traditional things, and, and they are things that people want to hold on to. Um, so it just varies. Thank you. Thank you. So just want to ask some of the other people over here. Would anyone else want to add some of their inputs? Uh, I see Fashionite, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Hi. We are into exports from last 20 years. <clears throat> and we mainly deal with fashion garments. And three years back, we started kids wear and selling mainly to US and South American market. And because we are attaching the labels, the retail prices on the tag. So that's why I know that minimum, I will say the markup is, if it is a wholesaler, it's three times. And then if it is a direct retail brand you are selling to, it is minimum five to seven times, I will say on the wow. buying price or the lending price. Okay, just want to get to some of our other audience. Shine, I see you here as well. Would you like to say something, Shine? You have to unmute. Okay. Yep. Hi. Hi. Hello. Yes. Please go ahead. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. I'm sorry, but um, I, I I really don't want to show my video because uh, as you're seeing that um gonna <laughs> take a shower so <laughs> yeah I, <laughs> don't laugh okay okay stop um okay uh, but anyway uh, nice meeting you anyone and um, i'm from taiwan uh i'm a designer and a founder of my uh, new brand of the uh, customized uh, kids wear um i i believe the you guys might probably uh, see my info from the the, the chat. Uh, I have some uh, website and my IG and also Facebook on that. Okay, so don't um, <laughs> um, please don't forget, uh, but don't don't remember what what I'm looking right now. Okay, I'm <laughs> ready. Press. Don't, don't, okay. don't worry. Don't don't worry. Don't worry about it. But uh, you leave your leave your information on the chat box. So because uh, I I did read your information. I think you had signed up in one of our notifications. So, uh, but leave all your information. And if anyone, uh, do you have a do you have a brand as well? Yeah, uh, I created my new brand. Yeah, okay. that's okay. my own brand. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Because so just getting back to uh, 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 Lannis, is that, is that your name uh, or is that the brand name? Lannis uh, or Actually, I come by with my son's name and my name. Okay, 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 sir. okay great. So Lannis, yeah. uh, can you tell us more? So tell us more about uh, about. I just want I just want to know how's how's it in Switzerland? Like how's how's it there? You know? Can you tell us more about it? Because for me, when I look at Switzerland, uh, I. Just, no, sorry, Shine, we've moved on to Lannis. We're going to get back to you. Okay, so the name is Lannis oh, sure. Frankfurt. Uh, okay. The name is Lannis Frankfurt. Um, we are a German brand, so we are German focused brand. in Germany, not in Switzerland. Okay. And um, as I said, all the products that we do are hand handmade. If you want, I can show also a dress that I have just created for a client, just to have an idea what, what we produce. 
So um, we do stuff like this, for example. Lovely. For different um, events or for birthday, for a party, for wedding and stuff like this. And as I said, everything is handmade and uh, we have a showroom in Frankfurt, but uh, we also have an online store and uh, we have uh, international clients. Because uh, to be honest, the German, um, people they don't dress up very often so uh, they uh, like a minimalistic um, a line and uh, we work more with the international people that lives in germany but uh, also uh, worldwide no, i can see your stuff doing really well in the middle east market you know and i, I know yes. so so now now uh, now back to matthew back to you now you've got an idea you've got manuf are you i just want to understand are you now your showroom is it only for brands or are you looking also for manufacturers and, and, and other people and just tell us more because you have manufacturers here, you have retail stores, you have brands. So please go ahead. Absolutely. So what is so great about our building is that it's not just fashion showrooms. Um, we have textile showrooms. We do have manufacturers. Um, you cannot manufacture in the building, but you can absolutely have a manufacturing office there to meet with clients, discuss um, you know, what is going on, get your tech packs together, ship them out to, to wherever you're manufacturing. Absolutely. Um, I do have say over the past year of lockdowns and quarantines, um, the showrooms that had a lot of business were the textile showrooms um, because manufacturing kept running strong. It was deemed essential here in California. So it's been actually quite booming out here on the West Coast. Um, but yes, no, you, you can come and participate in all types of ways, uh, no matter how you are with you're the finished goods selling at wholesale, or if you are selling a raw good zippers, um, textiles, anything like that, that you can use your permanent showroom for either one of those there. Also in our building, outside of the, the wholesale marketplaces that we do for, for kids wear or women's wear or men's wear, um, we also host and produce LA Textile um, twice a year as well in our building. Um, LA Textile is the, the largest West Coast uh, textile show. It's also the longest running textile show on the West Coast. Um, our next edition for this one will be this fall, September um, 29th into October 1st. Uh, it's historic Historically, always been an in-person show, but the past two seasons, we did switch to a virtual platform right here. We actually use Zoom just like this uh, to, to broadcast the brands there. Um, so yeah, anybody out here that's in manufacturing, design, you're looking for textiles, you need to find new brands um, to, to produce, new mills to produce with, um, contact me, reach out. I will be happy to send you our contacts that we've had for previous shows. If you want to participate in the show as a textile mill yourself, please contact me. I would love to talk to you about options there. Um, there's, there's a lot going on here in LA um, and we're, we're open for, for business to happen in fashion out here. Okay. <clears throat> So anyone you could you could just contact Bambinos, would you like to say something? No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm okay, on just... my way. I've got to get going. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to do about three different things here all at once. <laughs> so but Bambinos, leave leave your information. So if some of the brands want to contact your store, you know, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you're looking, are you looking for brands to stock? Um at the minute, we're, we're almost going back to being a blank canvas again, because we don't know what we're going to be experiencing with, with the um, lift in the lockdown. Um, we've got staple stuff, like I said, you know, the baptism, communion, school wear. Um, we do a little bit of fashion. We do other things, but whether or not um, it'll be like it was in the 80s and 90s when it was, you know, mad and you could sell anything, <laughs> we don't know. So, yeah, I'll leave my details. We can always hook up. Okay, super. So now my question is to Monta Milan. Yeah, hi. Yes. Okay. Hi. So, um, so I, I, I mean, just tell us more about what do you see like the trends? I mean, because none of us have really spoken about the trends in the in the in the in the industry, and I know uh, I know you spoke about your brand and and your man. So I'm, I know you have an idea. What do you what do you see like post COVID? What do you see the trends in 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 kids wear? Mm, I see it going a little bit more casual based on the customers that come in when we do pop up shops, because uh, most of the children, well, not all the children, are working from home. And they're, the parents are looking for more casual wear. And that's when we started, you know, playing around with our, our denim. 
um, something that they can wear all year long as well as wear it in the house and not be in sweatpants all the time. So I see everything going very casual. So does anyone else want to add some of their thoughts towards trends in the kids wear industry? Uh, maybe, yeah, please, please go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can speak to a couple of the trends that we're seeing out here um, as I, right. I get my hands on all the brands and hear from the retailers as they're actively buying into their stores. Um, boys wear is a huge growing trend right now. Um, obviously, boys have always needed clothing, but what's happening specifically in America is um, moms and dads are dressing their boys, one, in more creative outfits, um, more color than we've ever seen before in, in boys wear before. Um, and we're stepping out of just the dinosaurs and trucks as far as the graphics go. Uh, we're seeing a lot of nature inspired for, for kids wear, um, a lot of outdoor themes. Um, camo is still going to be here forever. Um, people love camo, especially, uh, specifically in the U.S. market, um, and bring it in every color possible. Um, they are looking for it. Um, also, big trends uh, in kids wear is um, special events. So christening dresses, absolutely. I completely agree with that there. Um, what has not stopped during the pandemic are babies. <laughs> Babies are still happening, and I think we're going to see a huge baby boom in the next, uh, you know, six to nine months. Um, so, uh, so baby, if you don't make baby, but you make kids, you might want to add some baby lines in there as well, um, because it's the number one growth category as far as kids clothing right now, because um, even though you might not be buying any skirts or dresses to wear for your Zoom meetings for work, um, everybody is gifting for, for new babies because it's at least something that we can do to feel human right now. Um, so those are some major trends I'm seeing out here in, in the West Coast and just US. You know, I, I think you're absolutely spot on with all the things that you've said. I, I just, I couldn't agree more, you know. Uh, Bambinos from, from, from the UK, any, any of your thoughts? Yeah, I'm thinking about the the more relaxed um, casual wear in relation to children and how we're looking at it here. I mean, in London, I think we're we're tending to, although not necessarily want formal um, wear all the time, but more structured because we're encouraging. Um, we seem to be more encouraging that uh, children should be in thinking about their um, their weight and their appearance, especially during post COVID lockdown, because so many of them have put on weight. So the emphasis tended to be more leaning towards that way. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stay like that. So yeah, I mean, um, the fact that things may be a little bit more casual, um, how do we incorporate that into the limited time that we have in relation to school where they're in uniform and then just weekend wear? So we're looking at just weekend wear that's going to be relaxed. So it's, it's a small window. And the shop by PR, would you like to would you like to add something? Sure. And actually, I have a question too. Um, you know, regarding what Matthew was saying about babies, we are absolutely that is what we're fulfilling often. And what's interesting too about the baby element is there's a lot of babies who people don't get to meet for a long time. And so um, what we're doing a, a great deal of is not so much the newborn in the zero to three month, but, but a lot of people are ordering or, or buying the six to nine month and the nine to 12 and the 18 month, which 18 month from our experience has been a bit of a, a hit and miss size. Um, but a lot of people are, you know, they'll say, we don't get to meet them. And, and it puts, it adds actually that they want to do a, a, it's interesting like uh, they do two gifts they do the smaller gift of like sending to them to show we're thinking of you and and we're we're excited to meet baby once we get to see baby are these, are these more they, onesies are these onesies mainly so everything so we are actually like it's really like gift set right so if they kind of want to do a range of you know as far as outfits go, rompers are, are really successful. Um, when it doesn't take on so much of a onesie, but it is that one piece outfit. Um, beautiful pajamas, you know, coming back again to that organic um, topic and conversation. We find much more about the interest of the organic in the sleepwear too, um, for little ones. Um, also with that is um, a great deal that we're trends is the big brother, big sister 
vibe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of that pairing and they don't want to be exact, but they absolutely want to show cohesion. And then, you know, Matthew mentioned um, the dinosaurs. Uh, Matthew, I'm just like kind of on your shirt tail here. Um, that uh, what I did on, on little, so my children's line is called Little PR, so Little Love. And um, in my children's line, what I did is I took the dinosaurs for the girls. And so my dinosaurs are pink and lavender and like corduroy. I am so big on the, on tactile. And so um, I'm, I use a lot of corduroy in my kids line. And, um, but it's really cool. You know, that was one of the reasons why I opened the store. It wasn't so much about what the parents are buying. I'm all about what the kids want. And so like watching the children pick and select from our windows and then also watching those kids shop in our shop is really cool. But I think the baby boom is legit. And, and, but then the mindset of what people want to give who may not be able to actually meet baby is a whole different mentality than I think what the, what the dominant percentage has been before. Sorry, that was a whole lot of information, but I have a one quick question. Um, what are you guys seeing? You know, we've talked about like going back to school um, and so forth. Here in Chicago, there's still, it's still a mix of virtual school and in-person school. What are you seeing for masks for kids? Well, that's a great, that's a great, uh, I actually have a Thank friend that, that's been talking. <laughs> I have a friend who's been talking about his, his kid's mask line for the last six months, but he's not having his, every time I ask him, where's the product? He's like, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. So. We do masks for kids. Um, we do we do masks for kids, but um, I'm just curious, like what people are hearing and seeing, because again, I think that this pandemic, you know, unfortunately worldwide, it is so interesting, even like what Matthew's going through in California is so different what we're going through here in Chicago. And then in the state of Iowa or Texas is so different than what either of us are going through. So it's so regionalized as well of what like of what trends or what happenings will continue forward. So would anyone like to sh share their thoughts on this? Um, yeah, Akash, do you please? You have to unmute. Well, uh, so, so, so what's are you are you in are you in Ru you're in Russia right now, right? I'm in Mo I'm in Moscow. Yes, I'm in Moscow. And, and what is it? What is it? What is the trends over there like? What 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 can you tell yeah, us? Yeah. So so I think uh, we resonate with whatever Matthew's been saying, whatever everybody else has been saying. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to start by saying, uh, Bambino, that you know, I mean, don't don't just give it away so easy. I mean, you know, I know that you know. Online is the trend right now, but trust me, people are going to crave for this one-to-one -one interaction. And uh, we see uh, here in Russia, because we are not closed right now, you know, we've opened up stores, kids are going to school, you know, we are vaccinating everybody, everybody very drastically. Sorry? Uh, did, did somebody ask a question or something? Oh, okay, anyways. So uh, for Bambino, I would like to say that, you know, she should probably not give it up so easy. And uh, uh, I have seen a great surge in business in the last few months. Uh, uh, January, February, March have been fantastic for us, for fabric, for garments, for consultancy. So uh, guys, I mean, trust me, things are gonna be back and they're gonna be back with bang. Uh, what once upon a child said is also pretty uh, impressive because I think future is definitely for uh, you know clothes for children which are being reused again and again. And uh, about PR, I think, uh, what about men's line? I mean, why is there no men's line? You're talking about kids and women. I mean, you know, we need men's line too. Bring right? it. I love it. I love it. Would happy I mean, to. You, happy you, to. You have, I'd love, I'd love you, you to have, that. Your husband <laughs> is an Indian, right? And Indian men really like to dress a lot. They spend a lot of money on their clothing. True. So I think you, you need to have men's line too. And... Uh, you know, about trends, I think one thing that we probably have missed in this discussion is about uh, not having lots of fast fashion clothing. We all should be probably thinking about that very much because, you know, uh, I think uh, earlier uh, we used to talk about uh, expensive clothes only being made, uh, you know, with lots of craftsmanship and, you know, they would be timeless. But I think it's high time we started making all categories of clothes which are timeless because, you know, 
with the way things are we we not being able to travel a lot besides casual clothing it should be timeless clothing which is not fast fashion and maybe some element of technical technical textiles coming in you know i've been doing a lot of business with uh, with the yarns which are uh, you know um, moisture management for kids for example you know that is something that we really need to look on that's going to be definitely very much in in the future you know you know we have we have some great companies producing moisture management yarns in india so like and they are doing fantastically well. like smart clothes like smart clothing like pretty much smart yeah, clothing yeah yes 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 absolutely so i think uh, just you know, matthew's bang on everybody else is very positive and tarun fabulous work man fabulous so just absolutely. so just just before we end our session i think neha malhotra wants to say something she raised her hand um yeah hi sorry i actually came in on this uh, seminar a bit late but kind of caught the tail end of matthew um just just a quick brief introduction i'm actually a exporter that works in luxury um my clients based around new york and and london and paris but i through covid started my own line which is something that i've wanted to do for a really long time and it's based around like kids wear boys wear and men's wear and the idea being i guess when i had my kid quite a cliche but i realized there was nothing out there that i would really like him to be dressed in and so that hit every single thing matthew kind of i think the creative the color nature everything that really resounds is what we're working towards so that was really positive to hear um and in general like I just feel like with kids wear especially I think it's really important to be a little responsible as well because in in a kind of more universal way we're kind of guiding them at a very early age where they should dress and how they should dress and and I think re- restricting the way they are dressing with the blues for the boys and the lines and stuff I'm like you know what like I want my kid to wear anything that he finds interesting that he finds um, absolutely you know and i see that a lot with my with my son and now i've realized like i want to do something you know what at least let him have an option if he wants to wear something different it has to be there mm-hmm. so where actually and and this kind of then stems mm-hmm. into men's wear because i'm trying to be sustainable with the way i design so anything that kind of i'm designing for children as in print as in embroidery as in is going to generically be for a uh, an elder an elder child man and a woman so it's generally just design that goes across all platforms you know which for right. me i think is me being responsible towards the way people should be thinking and should be bringing up their kids you know and just generally responsible in design so um i mean it's been great listening to all of you thank you so much but uh i'm so happy i heard matthew because it's given me that little boost of confidence which i needed thank you i mean and i'll be in touch matthew when i'm ready which will be the next two months i'll be ready because la is is kind of my target market very very much so so i'll speak to you soon thank, thank you everyone thank you so thank you so everyone since we're going to come it's going to come to our end of our webinar i just want to say a few, a few more words about fashionably in you know so fashion bean we're a trade show platform like i mentioned we do we used to do a show in london uh, twice a year hopefully hopefully when september we'll be back again and what we do is we we're not a big show we're very small you know we're not we're small but we focus on 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 like marvel's one of our clients who's been to one of our shows and participated it's more smaller but it's more intimate and we organize meetings b2b meetings so till 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 we start our shows again we run a virtual service uh, which is like a you know like a completely virtual service uh, same way when you when you when you do a street show you want to meet agents you want to meet buyers you want to meet press we do the same thing we connect you with the people through to like this through b2b meetings through emails through whatsapp whatever is convenient to you and give you like the same thing of like basically getting exposure and getting you more business you know so that's a premium service that we offer if anybody's interested uh getting more markets growing their brand you know like you see here we've got people from all over the world we 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 do something right and we we basically make it happen you know 
But again, we can't guarantee business the same way no one can guarantee business, but we can guarantee you meetings and connections with the right people, you know? So uh, I just want to say thank you all for being here. It was a, it was a pleasure. And, I, and we got, you know, Matt, you really, you really said some really right things. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, uh, I don't know, have you trained, have you practiced this or was this just natural? This is from years of working in fashion. This <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so before we end, uh, uh, you know, uh, Marvel again, thank you for your words about, about, you know, about manufacturing. Once again, anyone needs a good manufacturer, you have someone who's solid. Uh, I'm sure he can easily do any of those onesies or any of the kids' baby stuff that people need. Uh, before we shut, before we close today's session, does anyone else would like to say something or any words of wisdom or anything that they would like to add? Please go ahead. Hi, uh, just want to say thank you for all. It's a wonderful uh, meeting. And um, I'd like to thank Tarun for this uh, opportunity you created for everybody. And anybody want to manufacture in India, whether it's a kids wear or men's wear, ladies wear, 100% cotton, you can please contact me. I have already shared my email ID to you. And uh, good luck for all your business. Thank you. Anybody else would like to say something from, from, from Frankfurt? Please. Okay, so thank you very much for this great opportunity and I will keep in touch with some persons here because I think we have some things in common. So thank you so much. <laughs> great, and uh, anyone else? Would, uh, PR? Would you like? To... Sorry, I didn't get your first name. Sorry, I keep calling you PR. That's okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so sorry, first name is Paula. Okay, Paula. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I really, this platform was really great. I mean, we talked about the pandemic and what we're all experiencing. And I'd have to say, interesting enough, situations like this would not have been happening had, the, had we not been going through what we're all going through. And I do appreciate the transparency and, and the lean in, right? Like we're honestly in the industry, so much, many of us are, are leaning on each other and sharing way more than what we ever have. You know, um, it's it's a tie, and I you know, don't mean to go on and on, but I will say that one thing that I always talk about with my colleagues, um, as you know, in India, and we produce all over. You know, we're in different cities in India, but um, so interesting of how we're going through the same thing. You know, and um, you know, before in different situations, we've empathized with each other, but we didn't, we weren't able to sympathize. And now we're very sympathetic. And I have to say, you know, as a manufacturer, when, when people are, are pushing of, when is this coming? When is this coming? When is this coming? Before it used to put me in a spot where I just, oh, we'll get it to you quickly. And, and now I just take a breath and, and I just have to kind of figure out, is that the person who I want to work with? Do they understand what is going on here, what is going on there? Like our factories, some of them are only working at 30% capacity. I don't think, I think we need to all continue to, to lean on each other and look at the whole picture. Of Absolutely. Absolutely. So that really is something I think that the industry really should be proud of is standing up for each other versus going against each other. Absolutely. So, so I appreciate you putting this forum together. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Anyone, anyone else before we close? Uh, Monta Milan, would you like to say the last words of wisdom? Uh, uh, yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, I lost the connection for a while. Yes, um, thank you so much for the invite. This is very you know, informative, um, meeting other people and hearing what's going on with their um, brands and, and stores <laughs> makes me feel more comfortable. <laughs> Um, and we're still, you know, moving on and um, as well. And we've developed great relationship with our um, with our factories um, here in Chicago. Um, that way we can, you know, keep our hands on. We're both supporting each other um, as well. Um, and we're developing, you know, new relationships. We've been getting calls from different companies, uh, well, stores um, inquiring about us going wholesale so that's what we're sort of working on so we're we're keeping our head above water 
saying new new opportunities coming in. You know, obviously a lot of doors have shut, Absolutely. but a lot of a lot of new opportunities Absolutely. are opening up, new new ideas. Absolutely. So thank you all again. You know, really appreciate you being here, and 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 hope to hope to see you soon. We keep doing webinars every week, so every Thursday we got a different webinar. Uh, 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 Matthew, you may, may be interested to come in some of our other ones, which would be interesting for you as well. And uh, so you can you can see the list of our events uh, on 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 um, on uh, on our website fashionbean.com. And uh, PR once again, sorry to call you PR again, but we have a. I know you said you do home decor, so next next Thursday our webinar is focused on on home decorative accessories and home decor. So maybe something that you look, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Same same timing, same 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 place. Obviously different meeting ID, but yeah. So th thank you all for being here and really appreciate all of you, all, all your support. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you, everyone. Great meeting you bye all. Bye. Bye. Great. Lovely. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.